Hello and welcome to The Note. Well, today's big news, as probably everybody is by now aware, is that the Fed surprised the market by actually tapering its QE bond purchases. But it drew the sting from that by offering some extremely positive forward guidance with the result that most stock markets were actually up on the news. With me now to discuss this is the uh, European Head of Market Strategy for JP Morgan Asset Management and a former Financial Times colleague, Stephanie Flanders. Stephanie, thanks very much for joining me today. Were you surprised by this announcement? I think everyone had been going into this suggesting it was 50-50, that it would be a close run decision, but the, the, all, the movement of the data and I think the movement of sentiment in the last few weeks had all been in the direction of them maybe doing a taper. So in that sense, people were less surprised than they would have been two weeks ago, for example. We'd had that good mm. news on the budget agreement. We'd had very strong results on the labour market, an OK inflation number. So I don't think in the end people were surprised. And I think we saw that in the response to what they said. They managed to do it in a way, managed, if you like, to have an expansionary taper decision, which I'm not yes. sure we would necessarily have uh, expected. I don't think we would expect it. But it could also have some negative consequences. If we take a look at what's, uh, what's the, result, the, the uh, link between QE so far, the expansion of the Fed balance sheet and the stock market has been, it's contributed to a quite remarkably strong and consistent rise in stocks. Is there any sense in which this could be unhealthy? You do hear people talking now about the risk of a melt up in US stocks. Look, I think what you, if you're looking over the last few years, um, it's certainly, and even just looking at that chart, I mean, there, there's plenty of that red line which is not being matched by uh, stock market rises. So sure. I think in a sense, you can, you can get any picture from looking at the market. I think in the last year or so, I think there had been uh, at least before talk of a taper, I think there was there was some concern that in the bond market and to a lesser extent in the stock market, mm. things had got a little bit out of hand. I think that was more the case in the bond market because if you actually look, the earnings had actually not been strong, were not very strong this year, but they had been much stronger than the stock market was giving companies credit yes. for in the previous year. So you could argue that all of this increase we've had even from down to, up to 2013 was justified by previous earnings growth, which had actually been surprisingly strong in the US. But having said hmm. all that, mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the things that does make me a bit nervous about going into the next year, I don't think that we're looking at uh, necessarily a massive bubble that needs to be pricked. But if we saw that kind of steady rise, that kind of comfortable rise continue at that kind of level for another year, I think I would start to get a bit nervous about where the valuations could go next. OK, so bubble talk might be a little premature, but I some would, concern say, about premature. this. Now let's take a look at the bond market, which is obviously the market that's most directly impacted by QE. One of the great concerns people have had is that uh, once the market starts to move, it could shoot up and uh, the Fed could lose control of the situation. Does that seem like a reasonable risk now, you know, getting on for six months after... after? I think there's a couple of things about that. I mean, what you can see on this chart is quite how, how far we've already moved in that taper mm. tantrum, as people like to talk about it. And I think, at least from where we are now, I think history would... If we continue on this kind of path, I think history might look back and say, actually, that the Fed had managed this normalisation mm. process or the early stages of normalising the cost of money. You can see we're still a long way off yeah. historical rates. Have managed that extraordinarily well. I mean, at the time, all of that discussion about taper seemed to be causing a lot of uncertainty but we've already seen the stock market didn't really have any problem with it long term and if you look at what happened in the bond market I think that many people when they talked about the speculative excesses mm. that might have been being driven by quantitative easing it's this they were talking about the fact that we'd had that further lurch down yes. in bond yields at a time when there was no reason in the fundamentals you could see for that to happen so the fact that we then had this correction I don't think it's an accident that that is when Ben Bernanke he started talking about a taper and I think now if we are on a steadier trajectory to higher rates I think uh, what we're seeing today is that stock market investors recognize that that's if you like rising rates in response to good news not in response to bad news and you react differently right. in that case let's finally just ask about that trajectory though for the for the future mm -hmm. we are tapering off the support but we're also promising the market that overnight rates are going to stay at zero until well well after the end of next year. Where do you think bond yields are going over the next year? Well, I think, I mean, it is, I think, crucial to the sustainability of this exercise that they've got that guidance. And I think we do have to hope that the forward guidance remains credible. As long as it is credible, I think you're, an by anchoring the short end, you mm. are actually limiting the potential upside. And of course, that's why the Fed is doing it. And I don't think that you'll see, I'd be surprised if you saw a full percentage, another full percentage point on the 10-year 
bond yield over the next year. I think we could be looking at half a point or three quarters of a point. But if the economy continues to grow as the Fed is expecting and we see the kind of improvement in the labour market expecting, given that that would not be any more than we saw last year, I don't see why that would cause a major problem to the stock market or be a major problem for the economy. Remember, we know this Fed is very dovish. If it did look like it was causing big problems, it'll probably be changing course. Okay, Stephanie, thank you very much indeed. To conclude, it's very difficult to disagree with anything that Stephanie has just said. So far, so good for the Fed. It's a very difficult to clamber down from such an extreme monetary policy, but so far they're doing it about as well as anybody could have asked.